Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're listening in from. Welcome to another episode of the Lanfrica Talks. I'm your host, Chris. Here at Lanfrica Talks, we focus on amplifying diverse viewpoints on AI, technology, data, in an effort to cultivate an inclusive platform where diverse perspectives strive and we aim to reshape the conversation to reflect a more equitable understanding of AI's impact, the impact of AI, the impact of data on our world. Today we have a very special guest, Lukman Ismailer. He obtained a PhD in machine learning with five plus years as a software engineer, leveraging technology for research and development. He has also worked as a successful university lecturer simplifying complex computer science concepts. He is an innate problem-solving prowess that enhances multidisciplinary teamwork. And finally, he is committed to quality education and impactful research and getting ready for challenging problems. You have a very impressive profile, Lukman, and I'm really excited to hear about your talk and discussion today. We're very happy to have you and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it's indeed an honor to be here today and of course to share um, uh, my work, uh, most of which was um, conducted around the, during my fellowship award with the Data Sphere Institu mm -hmm. Institution or Data Sphere Initiative. Um, I would quickly go into um, my the details of my work, which is centered around empowering African healthcare research through data sharing and governance. Um, as a background, um, we are generally um, familiar with um, the medical imagery data, which is some sort of um, um, images collected or digital images usually collected of uh, um, a medical intent. It ranges from um, MRI to X-ray to CT scan and, and, and so on. Um, interestingly, as did uh, confirmed by Kimberly during the last um, NVIDIA um, uh, conference, which in fact stated that um, imaging is a fundamental tool in healthcare and interestingly one of the arguments is actually the fact that 90 percent that much 90 percent of healthcare data is really about imaging and and for me this got me thinking this is really an important thing that um some sort of transform the way research is done the way um the entire medical service is provided and we've seen that in recent years, the the this the pace at which this is um, going, it's really um, uh, to say the least, really unpredictable. Now, a common limitation in medical imaging research is lack of sufficient data set, which is um, kind of uh, again, uh, it's it, it's almost um, intuitive to say because. Uh, one of the reasons for this limitation is actually to be able to process the data. Collection is one thing which comes with having the right tools. And the next thing is actually processing the data. Now, there are two things that are usually lacking in this case. We talk about the um, limited um, skills to actually process this data. And the second, which is the actual, when this skill is somehow available, it's usually very tedious and time consuming. Um, uh, it's, uh, I can usually talk about the very basic um, data processing thing, like image annotation, which is done in every, uh, um, when it comes to trying to mo model a, maybe an AI model or so, uh, the annotation process actually requires the knowledge of an expert. It's not um, modeling a, a functional brain network or annotating a functional brain network image isn't like um, annotating, you know, fruits or 
um, farm animals as, as we can imagine. So this poses a, a very uh, uncommon uh, problem. And at the time, most of which actually uh, emanates um, during my PhD, uh, we had a lot of collected data and um, this data needs pre-processing, which cannot always be done by everyone. And at the, the what ended up being processed for training any machine learning model for predictions before we can even begin to benefit the output of research gets tremendously stripped down. And this, uh, this is really due to the lack of interoperability and of standardization. This is because it's, it's quite difficult to have a cross-platform standard for different uh, research organization or what have you. And then the next thing is the insufficient health information infrastructure. Um, while most of these uh, are described in the concept or the, uh, the setting of Africa uh, environment, I kind of personally shared an insight with this because even during my PhD in France, we had most similar limitations, which were by factor magnified in the case of uh, African uh, context. And the next thing is the ethical and regulatory issues. Of course, the um, international organizations still limit um, public sharing of medical data. This is again um, a, a difficult issue when we did look at many of the um, data privacy laws like the um, European privacy law, which some of my colleagues at the time uh, during the fellowship are actually focused on. Um, we do not have um, a, a entire regional um, data privacy law for Africa. And one of the things which I would furthermore discuss um, just in a bit is that we have actually different data privacy laws in different countries or regions in Africa. And the specific motivation is the fact that the medical imagery data is generally limited and unavailable. And um, too many excellent research could actually help transform healthcare service in Africa as we've seen it. And looking at um, from our uh, um, recent research, which actually focus on understanding um, what computer vision research communities are doing in Africa. We've in fact reliably established that African researchers can set the foundation in cutting edge medical research. And in fact, every other areas, if we um, are able to um, set this environment that is making the data available. And of course, there are a few other limitations which I will discuss in our um, first um, focused engagement, then there, there, there is no, um, there is need for, in fact, a better collaboration among uh, regional data silos. Now, I, I talk about data silos, um, as earlier referred to, as having different um, highly motivated individuals or um, institutions working on data, but not actually either willing or by policy, it's not even allowed to share this data. And um, for us, it's not, again, not about just sharing the data. It's really about um, equitably and um, in within the confine of the law, sharing the data, because we do generally understand that, um, um, you know, it's important to respect people's privacy and we can just share every other data, not even when the consent is given. So someone cannot give you consent to share his or her um, uh, health data. That is still not allowed because the policy does not allow this. So it, it's the policy is kind of a, of a priority here. Now, for the rest of my talk, I, I, I would be discussing the um, medical imagery data. Uh, we talk about the research relevance of this. And of course, I'll be focusing on um, uh, the important challenges we have um, uh, observed in the context of um, Africa, talking about data availability, 
And then, of course, we will talk about the health data sharing trends, how um, this has been observed over, um, uh, we, we took a sample case of about um, uh, more than 20 years uh, thereabout. And then, of course, we look at some of our proposals for improving the current condition. And we cite the limitation of um, the entire um, uh, work. And lastly, we will um, share our conclusion. Now, medical imagery data provides deeper understanding on the relationship between environmental factor, physiological factor, and health outcomes leading to improved diagnosis and care in medical practice. This is very uh, uh, important because we know uh, from various um, situations that having this data, and of course, the larger you have it, and looking at the context of trying to have a predictive model, which means we are trying to train a machine learning model that is able to explore data to make some important prediction. Um, it is often very important that we provide um, Highly, highly general data. This is important to have a model that is in, in, in the actual term robust. That means it's the model is able to correctly predict on the data that it has never seen before. And a way to do this is actually to collect wide range of data. Now, the use of uh, imagery data also is important to identify disease patterns, uh, investigate genetical health connections and understanding in impact of environmental and social factors. The next is um, it also helps researchers to make informed decision and observe visual interactions between treatment candidates. Again, this comes when we talk about um, uh, clinical trials and so on, which I'll go for. But it, at the first instance, we talk about the observed um, visual interactions. It is important to mention that um, it is still very relevant for clinicians to look at some of these medical imagery data to make decisions. There are many protocols that demand that. And, and just by connection, that is why telemedicine has that preliminary uh, limitation because visual contact is important, visual is important. And um, for the case of uh, uh, clinical trials, it has also been uh, established in, in, in recent study that um, many of, you know, clinical trials does receive um, close to about 90% boost when, um, a lot of data. I I I I, um, I will share the um, story about. I think there is this uh, prediction model on clinical trial simulation that is now able to happen using the UK uh, Biobank and of course the um, University of California um, medical imagery data. This is now possible because of the amount of data collected and. Indeed, it actually helps researchers to make this wide uh, decision. And medical data, of course, is um, really important to make this um, prediction of, of, uh, of a larger case. And for our specific uh, focus in throughout uh, my fellowship and what I have uh, focused on in recent times, I will talk about the critical challenges with um, medical data in Africa and data governance policy in Africa, which is one of a very critical thing to observe when we talk about the level of uh, at which data is generated, the level at which data is actually shared. And um, Medical Biobank for Africa, which is our um, initial proposal. And also we uh, recently have um, proposed uh, a, a federated learning uh, for medical data. And I would come to each and every one of these uh, uh, just soon. Um, first, to talk about um, the factors that limit uh, medical imagery availability in Africa, 
specifically some of the limitations we uh, have um, reliably uh, observed is the cross-border transfer of personal data and complexities of uh, regulatory bodies. This is in fact true as earlier mentioned, because in Africa we have, uh, not only do we have data silos, but we also have policy silos. It means the policy in, 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 in South Africa, which was one of our case study, uh, aside the limitations that we do not have um, uh, homogeneous policy, it's also difficult to understand the policy of certain regions. Uh, I, I put clearly the specific case we, we observed where in the entire Africa, we had only um, uh, four countries, four countries that we were able to reach their policy, you know, put some observation and so on. I, I, I think um, in the entire Africa, there was only one, country that was able to provide about um, 70 to 80 percent of its own citizens data when it comes to birth rate, death rate, and so on. This is not very um, directed to medical data, but we are talking about non-critical um, medical data, like just birth rate and death rate and so on. And yet, not um, we, we were not able to find up to even 10 percent of um, the regions to provide that. And so there is serious complexity in regulation uh, or like re regulatory bodies or policies. Now, the limited funding is, in fact, a general case. We see that almost everywhere uh, because these things cost money, right? Um, so, and for all funding bodies, what needs to actually uh, be profound is the projected impact. And once this is not straight out, it is in fact hard to um, uh, um, to get many of the available funds. And this is the cross of what we observe. That is, in fact, it's also difficult, not only that um, the funding are limited, but it's in fact difficult to, um, you know, attract funds because of the current situation of um, uh, African research, related to medical uh, data. Poor data management comes from two things. First, we see it in the technological um, perspective, because the, um, the, you know, the professional management, having the skills and um, expertise to actually manage medical data. Um, it does emanate from the initial mentioned um, condition, which is the interoperability and following the international standard. And of course, um, infrastructure plays a crucial role when we talk about um, having reliable data centers that will remain um, accessible, which takes me to the next point. Um, how accessible are our data centers, uh, at least the ones uh, we have? Um, th this is, in fact, a, an important question to ask because when we begin to think about availability, we also um, have concerns about the vulnerability in the data that is accessible. How vulnerable, in fact, are they to several things? Because it may not be, um, not just that the accessibility can be blocked, um, medical data can be easily corrupted because as you can, um, you know, understand there are some interesting patterns that needs to be observed over a wide range of data when it comes to medical data to actually be able to to learn for a machine learning model to learn and make in fact um, any useful prediction and once that is tapped into the entire um, coordination um, uh, will be disrupted and of course, the last point we, we did observe is actually the cultural and ethical reasons, uh, which in the African continent wide, um, uh, it's easy to say that there are, of course, different cultures and practices, the different cultures and practices. And each of these have their um, some sort of um, some 
restrictions when it comes to how 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 open minded they are um in terms of sharing data in general and even worse when we talk about medical data to even make it possible or be available to get this data in the first place is really um a, a difficult thing so these are uh, some of the observed um limitations we we have seen leading to the uh, unavailability of medical imaging, imagery data. All of this, which we shared in our uh, initial uh, publication of uh, state of medical data, a case of barrier to science. Um, the next, I, I just um, want to put this depiction that interestingly shows that there is improvement in the health data uh, trend in Africa. Uh, especially in recent years. We've looked at this uh, from quite uh, back uh, about now 20, 30 years uh, on the outlook. It's getting even better and better, which then means that there is some in, in uh, I, I can say natural intuition that um, scientists or researchers now have better confidence in sharing medical data some of which comes with research papers and so on. And in fact, most of these comes with research papers and they are eventually tied to their process data and they are very tied to specific topics. So these are good things, but um, uh, what we would like to see will be, uh, I mean, the, the, something could be better done uh, com compared to this when we talk about the health data sharing in Africa especially when we're looking at um, improving scientific research. Some further investigation on possible solutions, which uh, are some of um, the ways we propose that could uh, help to mitigate the current limitations and of course boost um, data sharing uh, availability for medical imagery. So to, is to inf influence of data sharing policy to health uh, research in Africa, uh, it, it does, it definitely needs to be touched. The current data policy is neither sustainable nor does it align with um, boosting medical, um, uh, medical scientific research in general. And um, engaging the policymakers about this would really uh, help the next is uh, awakening of um, a sustainable data policy, which um, uh, the kind of uh, related the fastest influence of uh, data sharing. And then uh, improvement of medical data sharing for Africa for better governance and uh, credible scientific research, which tends to be um, like more like an outcome. We have also seen um, some focused communities that are pushing this in every way possible. We have communities dedicated to medical data where they actually conduct data challenges. And, and to mention this, data challenges are very, very important because they help to create um, not just any data, but well curated data, which are almost um, ready for, I could say scientific research or even directly train any machine learning model. And this will be a big, uh, plus in in the case we're considering, so I I I I think this is a very powerful um, opportunity that is empowering these focused communities to do more. Now, the next solution we uh, have looked at is the medical imagery biobank, and of course um, a data privacy centered learning, uh, otherwise federated learning all of which I, I, I should be discussing in better detail soon. And to further talk about some of our, the improvement possibility for better um, data governance and credible scientific research, it is important to establish well-articulated policies and imagery data standards. This is a an important take for us because it helps to um, resolve the issue of interoperability, which is in fact one uh, way to break the data silos we already have. 
because there is data silos everywhere in, in different regions in Africa. Now to develop mechanisms of oversight and accountability when it comes to the data, this comes um, in terms of um, having a stronger security for the um, data accessibility. And of course, um, to better understand how the policy should be in terms of, you know, sometimes we talk about um, uh, human centered data or um, data independence or, or, or some sorts. And that's when we talk about the uh, data accountability. And then to foster a culture of data sharing that is um, by uh, focus groups, um, advocacy programs can be, or educational programs could help in, um, um, you know, in better giving understanding on why this data should be shared and how it can provide a common good for everyone. And of course, to um, invest in our current infrastructure and technology. Here, I, 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 I briefly also want to talk about um, the current um, focused communities that are actually interested in, in, in promoting data, most of which are promoting data sharing in general. And um, about two, I, I well, okay, uh, about a few in general, uh, because I know there are lots of data challenges with the deep learning in Daba that we are all familiar with. And of course, uh, Black in AI in, in does organize certain things, sometimes related to medical data and other times not. Um, data s s um, Science Nigeria once uh, do focus on medical data. Rare Foundation is mostly imagery, anything imagery, I, I would say. And I, I know for the uh, Sisonke Biontech, which is uh, focused on health data and in Africa. And we've seen, um, uh, I, I think just recently, we uh, again discovered the availability of uh, a, a, a medical data that, um, so interestingly, we have also found that um, there are, um, when we, we we went forth to actually try to collect a lot of uh, available medical data or data in general. And we found out that only a few end up being published data and a lot more are actually better suited in our category that we refer to as unpublished data. These unpublished data do mean some local efforts to actually prepare some data for some purpose, most of which can be considered for scientific research or uh, yeah, high quality research. Uh, nevertheless, these data receive too minimal support to end up in some you know reliable database or otherwise being published. And that's when we have the published and unpublished data. But in general, these communities would, I mean, supporting these communities will provide um, way forward in data sharing and uh, medical imagery um, availability in general. And now to look into the um, medical uh, imagery data that we have, <laughs> interestingly, so I I'm, I'm going to, um, I, I do hope that this is big enough. Um, I, I would start to talk about the, I, I think it's important to highlight the the actors that we have here. Here we have um, actors like, um, you know, the private and non-for-profit organizations, of course, the governments and the um, ministry departments and agencies of the governments. And of course we have the health centers or healthcare centers. And then we have the academic and research institutions, which is um, um, for our main focus, this is where, the real thing happens, and of course, then the technological um, institutions. Now, we can see here for the health care centers, which comprises of hospitals and medical laboratories that help to produce or we can say generate this medical imagery data that we are interested in. And what then happens is, is that this uh, passes through a few um, a few pre-processing stage to end up in a local and regional data centers before it receives what we refer to as the data certification, um, which is 
mostly um, resident in the biobank system. Now, to look at this from the other side, where we have the um, uh, the you know this collaboration between the governments, ministries, uh, departments, and agencies, and of course the um, private and non-for-profit organizations, including um, actually um, other institutions, we expect that um, a cross-regional collaboration can lead to a more reliable data policy in this case. And this um, could help to oversee the, um, the, the sharing and of course, um, the accessibility of the medical imagery data, putting in 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 um, recognitions all of the uh, you know privacy related issues in general. Uh, I, I, to be honest, all of this kind of um, uh, sparks a lot of questions in in very different ways, in many interesting ways that um, we are currently receiving. But to say the least, um, this is intended to provide access to the academic and research institutions to carry out, of course, the um, high quality scientific research using the medical imagery data and engaging these technological institutions in a very reasonable way could help to upscale and continue to, um, you know, solve that technical problems that we uh, are likely to see. The next is um, the federated learning. Now I'll, I'll, I'll try to be a bit faster. And interestingly, so this was another um, uh, thing that comes as a spark of um, my PhD because um, we, be, you know, we, we continue to see how we could better improve what we have or how better it could have been if there was a little bit of collaborations with other, um, um, you know, similar research institutions or hospitals. And now, so that that takes me to the um, the main focus of this. The focus of this is actually to create a chain of collaboration between medical uh, centers. Now, in medical imagery or medical data in general, we know that there is privacy concern. And one way to obtain that privacy concern is to not share the data. Now, how can we have a machine, a typical machine learning model without you know, collecting the data and training some very large uh, model together? It's in one way is to take the models, or here we term them as um, the, um, the, it could be, seen as um, actually the training parameters, but we take the models to the data, all right? Instead of having the data collected in one large database and then we train use it to train one single model. So we have different data collected in um, hospital A or medical laboratory ABC or different data centers ABC. And then in the same order, the 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 if it's initiated or the if the training began in um, data center A, they train a, a model, and when what they have access to is actually the um, model weights, not the data, and they pass it on to the next data center, and the data center B, we then um, now now the concepts of machine learning are beautifully allows this to actually then continue training with new data. And for the model, it's just getting better and better. And as it passes through different data center, in the end, the model learns everything in all data center A to as many as you have without actually having to give data from data center A to another people or just trying to collect it in a single place. And that's really what this uh, model is based on. And um, there's been a lot of um, um, interesting insights on what computer-aided diagnosis and detection can benefit from this, most of which um, uh, uh, we are also very excited about. So um, as a conclusion, we've seen a lot of limitations in, in, in this in, in very um, different ways. We've talked about the data accessibility, uh, that 
it's in fact already difficult. We're not trying to get, um, just to clarify, we're not trying to get the medical data yet. We're trying to understand what is happening around medical data. It is still really difficult. And of course, mm -hmm. there are different policies in um, um, different regions in Africa. And having to go through this, I am personally familiar with only very only a few. And I can only imagine, and do not forget that we have different official languages in Africa. I, I'm not trying to assume this will be a major problem, but it would be important when we think of a homogeneous, um, uh, um, regional, a homogeneous policy in uh, data policy in Africa, how to better put all of this together. And of course, the infrastructural deficit, uh, which lead us to better understand that um, we do have unofficial uh, data available. And some of the way forward we have seen is the re-engagement of uh, regional stakeholders towards data policy review. And of course, uh, research education that is continue to advocate that, um, that the importance of this and what it can better lead to. We've talked about the um, uh, potentials of Africans taking uh, lead in, in um, you know, medical health research trend and so on, and better collaborate, collaboration across regions, some of which um, recent researches have also um, highlighted that, in fact, there are different focuses in different African, for different African researchers, and most collaborations come from international organizations rather than within. So we have so much, if we're um, looking at it this way, there is more powerful international collaborations than even uh, the local collaborations. And we could do more by just um, complementing our efforts locally. It is, in fact, important and interesting to also collaborate um, internationally as well. Now, as a conclusion, breaking this barrier is essential for um, unlocking the full potential of scientific advancements and profound influence on data sh uh, of data sharing on health research is um, what is expected. And um, there is uh, observed enthusiasm among uh, um, active research communities, as we've seen, and these people can um, better promote um, data availability if they received the necessary support. And this multi-sectorally multisector owned biobank can serve as a stepping stone towards a future where data norms and people work hand in hand to drive innovation and improve health. And lastly, by embracing a pathway towards credible scientific research, African healthcare can enhance the power of um, medical data and of course transform the way um, medical discoveries are in fact made. Uh, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you so much, Lukman. This has been quite interesting. You know, when we talk about AI and technology, very rarely do we talk about data and the many challenges around data. And that's something I am very passionate about because I believe that when we come to technology or AI in Africa, you really can't go anywhere if the foundation or what I call the roots, which is data, is not taken care of. So sure. there are significant challenges when it comes to data sharing and data usage in Africa. And this talk is really interesting because it touches on a good number of them and you are an expert based on the the work and the surveys you've done thank you so much um swiftly moving over into a more cozy setting to learn more about you we will start with some personal